Hey Ross World, my money makes money. First and foremost, for like the past two weeks, I've been in a process of moving locations. As you can tell, I'm in a different location. You don't see that ugly 70s curtain behind me. Now secondly, I would like to apologize for the string of videos that have been off with the sound. The sound was either slower or faster than the actual movements that were in the video clip. So please excuse me. I was using actually my cell phone, my Galaxy S7, and somehow the compression, the frame rates, blah, 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 was throwing off the sound when I transferred into my video editing software. Nevertheless, also, I've had an accident where I fell off my bike and I have a sore right here. And to my wife, no, it's not herpes, these women. Anyway, money is burning a hole in our pockets. What am I talking about? Money is burning a hole in our pockets. We have to understand that most of us, if we wasn't born to a wealth family or someone of substantial status, we were taught either subconsciously or consciously to be either two things, a laborer or a consumer, a laborer, a person who just works a person who just works a day-to-day -day job, a person who does not have their mind on investing, a person who doesn't have their mind on compound interest and dividends, a consumer, a person who simply buys, okay? And understand this, I forgot the guy's name, but he is a descendant of Sigmund Freud. He went out, he gathered all the Sigmund Freud's information on how the psyche works and related that to information how to make people buy his product and he's very successful i wish i had his name so you can go look him up but nevertheless you have to understand that most people are consumers while only one or two percent are actually the owners or actually the people who run these businesses now in order for you to obtain substantial wealth you have to lower your expenses you have to raise your savings and investing money is burning a hole in our pockets because you right now and most of the money that you spend, most of the expenses are impulse buying, are impulse buying. Some people actually invest like this. Well, I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go buy that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. But then they invest the rest. Why not invest first, have that allocated direct deposit, however you can get it done. So that money is first invested and then after your bills are paid, you can spend the rest. Why not compound your interest? Why not compound your money? Everyone knows that Isaac Einstein said that the greatest force in the galaxy, and quote unquote, these are not verbatim, quote unquote, compound interest is the greatest force in the galaxy because you can put money in an investment account, literally a certain amount, and let it grow. Take for instance, right? I dropped $500 inside of Wellfront, and after the first day, it grew a dollar. Now, some of you are saying, well, a dollar? Think about it like this, and I've said this before. Someone gives you $500 and someone invests $500. Now, you just got $500, but the person who is investing has $500 plus the money that the stock market will raise it from compounding interest. Then we also can get, get inside of compound dividends, but money has burned a hole in that pocket because your mind is not right. You don't have the right frame of mind. You don't have a right. You don't have the right frame of mind. The survival of the fittest, only the strong survive. Shout out the prodigy. This is the point I'm making. If money is burning a hole in your pocket because you don't have the right frame of mind, because you don't know what to do with the money, I'm telling you what to do with the money. Now, old school people, especially in black neighborhoods, and I have to speak about my people right now. No offense to my um, non-black subscribers, but growing up in Washington, D.C., Southeast, the only thing we knew was when we got money, was to go spend it. When we got money, was to go spend it. I'm gonna say it again because I don't think some of you are getting it. Once we got money, we went to go spend it. We didn't know, oh, maybe I should save it for later. Oh, we definitely didn't know anything about investing, but you'll have some people here and there, some old people in the neighborhood, Oh, you should save your money. Why? You know why? Because you might live past 30. You might live past 40. And some of you are out there thinking what our guardians, our parents, 
those people who are in our lives, right? That senior citizen or maybe the midlife guys around 50, then those people that are above us, oh, they don't invest their money into the stock market because they may lose their money. But if you don't invest inside the stock market, you're going to lose your money. And we talked about this, inflation. Now, either you're going to lose your money because you're going to just keep spending, right? Because the mind frame, the mind frame is a consumer. So we work all our lives. Now, haven't you asked yourself this question? Why is that guy at 60 still working at McDonald's? Because money is burning a hole in our pockets. Why is that guy at 65 still working at Burger King? Now, granted, some of them may just be doing it for a little extra cash or maybe for fun, something to get out the house. But believe it or not, a lot of those baby boomers you see, they're doing it because they did not plan for the future. And even if they use the 4% rule, okay, maybe if they use the 4% rule, don't forget the 4% rule is not a guarantee. Money burns a hole in our pocket because we simply don't have the mind state, the mind frame, because we have been brainwashed, perpetuated throughout the years from our parents, from our grandparents, and even from our great grandparents. You know why? Because we listen to them. And that subconscious message that they sent to us was about don't do this, don't do that, but save your money. Oh, I ain't putting my money in, in the stock market. All them rich white people put their money in the stock market and lose all their money. Now, I want you to take, for instance, and you have to do your own research. You know me. Do your own research. In the history of the stock market, the total return has been around 7 to 8%. Now, you take a company like Vanguard that invests in S&P 500 or the index tracking, right? The index tracking and those index funds I always preach about that and also the ETFs, those exchange traded funds. They have been getting great returns. Vanguard is a trillion dollar company. Ponder on that. A trillion dollars. And the only thing they're doing is investing in index funds. They're investing in index funds. So I tell people, if you have the time, if you have the patience, stop looking at everybody else doing personal individual stocks if that's not your thing. If you want to put your money somewhere and you want it to grow, the index funds are where you want to be. And I have all these different videos of all these different services and portfolios and apps to help you to get where you need to be. A lot of people always tell me, man, I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. Uh, I don't understand it all. Now, granted, if you travel through all these freaking videos I'm making, you will learn quite a bit. Now, all of them are not juicy and all of them are not entertaining in a sense that it really grabs you, but most of them are filled with pertinent and vital information for your financial mind for you to comprehend, understand what's really taking place. If anything else, though, what you'll know is that index funds and ETFs are pretty safe. Can I guarantee that you won't lose money? No, I can't do that. But what I can do is, is say that I've been making money substantially and I'm just going to let it sit. I'm just going to let it sit. You drop money here, you drop money there. And then also I do monthly allowances, a monthly allotment to those funds through Stash, okay? Through Wealthfront, through Robinhood. Now, Robinhood, let me back up, are for individual stocks. Those are your individual stocks. So money is burning a hole in our pockets. And I didn't want to beat this in your head, but stop being afraid to invest because you're just simply a laborer and you are just simply a consumer. And all these rich people are getting rich off the money that they're giving you and you're giving it right back to them, if not even more so because you're putting yourself in debt, okay? This is Ross World, where now you are developing a mind. You are developing a mind of a owner because when you own stock, you own an increment, you own a piece of that company. Think about that for a while. And if you invest in the right companies and you do your research, you will understand that you are no longer a laborer. You're no longer a consumer, but you're an owner. You may labor, you may consume, but you are now an owner. This is Ross World. I'm out.